What's up guys, it's Dave Marshall with the RCR Marshall YouTube channel and today we are doing a review and tutorial of the all new S1100 Smart Charger from Spectrum. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on so you're always made aware when we have new videos on the channel. Now let's take a look at this new charger. Quick overview of the S1100 Smart Charger from Spectrum, Just some quick specifications. This is an AC only single channel charger it is capable of up to 100 watts charging capacity at a 10 amp charge rate up to 10 amps uh, it can perform discharges at up to 1 amp or 10 watt discharge rate the s1100 supports multiple chemistries including lithium ion lithium high voltage lithium polymer life lead acid nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydride batteries the S1100 includes an IC3 output connection for the charge port. Uh, it is capable of charging smart batteries and picking up the smart data through the data wire that's included on the IC3. In addition to the IC3, it's also backwards compatible with EC3 connectors and all of our standard batteries as well. And there's a wide array of adapters, including XT series and Dean's plugs that make the Spectrum S1100 an ideal charger for almost any battery type. That's enough with the specifications. Let's head over to the bench and check out what the S1100 is all about. All right, we're here on the review table with the S1100 charger from Spectrum. And this is everything that you'll receive in the box with your S1100 charger. You will get the charger unit itself. You'll get the power cord. You will get a adapter. Uh, this is an IC3 battery connector to an IC5 device connector, which will allow you to uh, charge larger uh, IC5 equipped batteries with the S1100 charger. And you'll also receive an instruction manual. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the physical characteristics of the charger unit itself. Uh, the charger is in a plastic housing. On the top of the charger, you've got your display here, as well as a click wheel that's, uh, you know, just touch sensitive. You uh, can navigate all of your menus, and there's also a center button there to select whatever option you're on. On the front of the charger unit is your IC3 connection, as well as your balance port. On the back, you've got your fan assembly as well as your power input on the left side of the charger we've also got a micro usb port and that is for future firmware updates to the s1100 charger we're going to go ahead and plug in the s1100 and take a look at some of the menu options that are available in the charger when you initially power up the s1100 this is the screen that you'll be presented with after you're presented with the spectrum logo at this time we'll go ahead and click the center button on the click wheel and check out what's in the main menu. We'll press and hold the button, and that will take us to the menu where we get to our charger settings that you see here on the top. The charger settings include the task that we're going to be performing on the battery. So here we can set that up to be charge, discharge, or storage, as seen here. We can also check the battery chemistry, so we can change that between lithium high voltage, lipo lithium ion life lead acid and nickel metal hydride we can also adjust our cell count we can adjust it anywhere between 1s up to 6s here's where we would change our charge current the charge rates are adjustable from 0.1 amp all the way up to 10 amps right here's your start where you would go to start the charge cycle on a standard battery we're going to go ahead and scroll down below that because we can also get to some other settings on the charger. Uh, we can go to our system settings where we can change things like our backlight. So we can change it from high to medium to low. You can also change the volume of the beeps. You can change them from high, middle, low, or you can turn the volume off. Uh, the completion tone. You can either have it on single or repeat. Now, what that means is that when a battery charge cycle completes, it will either do a single signal or it will keep repeating the signal to let you know that a charge or discharge or storage cycle has completed. 
We can also adjust our touch sensitivity. This is on the click wheel. We can adjust that from high to low. We can change the language. Here we've got available, we've got English, German, French, Spanish, Italian. Now here we can perform a self-test. Now if you have a battery connected, the self-test will not uh, complete properly. Uh, but to initiate the self-test, you just press that center button and let it go through uh, its process there and then show you that all tests have passed. And to get back, you just press that center button again. It'll take you out of that menu. Next, we go to the, we can see the calibration screen. These come calibrated, so you shouldn't need to worry about that too much. Our next one is our system info. System info will tell you the hardware revisions, OS revisions, part number, things like that. Under system settings on that main menu, we'll see charger history. We can go ahead and click that. Here we see our charger history. As we can see, it shows the model number S1100 with the number of charge cycles today, the number of charge cycles total on the charger, which right now is four, the charger temperature, which is 86 degrees Fahrenheit, and our input voltage, which is showing 29 volts right now. We'll go ahead and click the button. We can back out of the charger history. And we will go back to the main screen, which is where we started when we first connected the power to the charger. Now the first thing that I wanna show you is the behavior of the charger when we're connecting a standard battery. We'll go ahead and connect the main discharge lead, which we can see on this battery is an EC3 connection. We'll go ahead and plug that into the charger. And we'll also connect our balance lead. Now what I wanna show you is the balance port on the front of the S1100, and this holds true for most of the smart chargers. It's a different type of balance lead than what you may be used to. And rather than taking the balance connector and plugging it in to the top, we're going to plug that in with the splines, which you can see uh, right here on the JST plug. We're going to have those splines facing down. All right, and we can actually see the contacts of the pins, the little barbs that hold the pins into the JST connector. We can see those on the top. So if you can see the little metal pins on the top of your uh, balance connector, you know that you're plugging it in the right way. And you wanna have that situated all the way to the left-hand side of the balance port. So we'll go ahead and plug that in here, all the way to the left. And that is all you need to do to connect your balance lead to the charger. So at this point, we've got a standard battery plugged in, and I affectionately call these dumb batteries now because they're not smart batteries. So if it's not a smart battery, it must be dumb. So I've got that plugged in. I've got my balance port plugged in. And on this charger ready screen, we're gonna see the pack voltage as well as our individual cell voltages. And in order to start the charge cycle or discharge cycle or storage charge cycle, we're going to need to press and hold to get to the main menu. And we can go ahead and set up our task, the battery type, cell count, and current. Uh, right now, we want to go ahead and charge the battery. Uh, it is a LiPo pack. That's correct. It is a 3S battery. So that is also correct. And it is a 3200 milliamp hour battery. So our charge current we have set to 3.2 amps. So we're gonna go ahead and use our click wheel to go down to start. And we're gonna click that center button and go ahead and allow the charge cycle to commence. Now we can go ahead and see that the charge rate is jumping up. So on this main screen now that we're in our charge screen, we can see that we've got our, in the display, we show the type of battery and the cell count, so it's a LiPo 3S. Over here on the right, we've got 93%, so it shows the battery percentage. We've also got a nice battery gauge there along the top. It shows us our charge rate, which is 3.1 amps, the capacity charge, which right now is 25 milliamps, and our total charge time, which is not counted up yet. Now, this is just the first screen once we start charging. Uh, we can go to different pages by using the scroll wheel, this will tell us our battery voltage. So this is the second page if we scroll the wheel over to the right. Uh, and again, it shows us our total pack voltage, 
uh, pack percentage still has the gauge along the top and it shows us our individual cell voltages as the battery's charging. And on the third page, it will show us our internal resistance of each individual cell as well as the whole pack. So we'll go back here and we'll allow that cycle to go ahead and complete. All right, so now the charge cycle is complete. You just heard the beeps there uh, notifying us that the charge is complete. And we can see a couple of things on the screen here. We can see that uh, we've still got a minor charge rate, which is like a trickle charge to keep the, uh, the battery sitting at 100%. Uh, we can see that it's sitting at 100%. Our charge bar, or our battery uh, bar, has changed from orange to green. Well, we see that we put in a total of 440 milliamp hours and the total charge time was roughly 30 minutes. So that is how to conduct the charge cycle on a standard or dumb battery. Uh, next we're going to switch over to using the smart batteries and how this charger differs a little bit from the previous iterations of the smart chargers. So the battery we're going to be using to test out the smart battery charging functionalities of the S1100 is a 2200mAh4S30C pack. This pack is, uh, is brand new out of the box, so we're going to see how this battery differs uh, once we connect all of the leads compared to the battery that we were using before. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the IC3 connector on the front of the battery charger. And you can see that it immediately reads the battery and it shows you across the top that it's a LiPo 4S 2200 milliamp hour 30C pack. And it reads that off of the smart chip that is located inside the battery itself. So right now it's a, it has insert balance lead. We'll go ahead and insert the balance lead. And what you'll notice is that it initiates the charge cycle right away. So you can see it says initiating smart charging. So we'll go ahead and let it do that. Um, and it's going to go ahead and start that charge cycle right away. And it's going to base that on the settings that are on the smart chip of this battery. So right now it's charging at a charge rate of 5.4 amps. You can see capacity charge is going up. Our, and you know, the same as with our dumb battery where it just said LiPo 4S. Now it knows what the milliamp hour capacity of the battery is. It knows what the charge or the discharge rate of the battery is. So it's a 30C pack. It knows the uh, the charge percentage is 60%. We've still got our battery indicator. And because it knows the milliamp hour rating of the battery, it can give us an estimated charge time remaining, where right now it's showing us 15 minutes. And that's another difference here is it will say smart charge as opposed to just charging. If we can press that menu and hold. And what I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and stop this charge cycle. So I went ahead and stopped the charge cycle, and the reason I did that is I want to go back into the menu, and I want to show you guys how we can change the, the values that are in the smart pack. So every time we plug this pack in, it's always going to treat it the, the same way, or, or based on the way that we want it. Um, you know, if we don't like the default values that are there when we buy the pack. So right now this pack is set up with a charge voltage uh, or a charge current of 5.5 amps. I would rather have that at say 1.5C, which for this pack would be about 3.3 amps. So we're gonna press and hold the button. We're gonna go here to smart battery settings. We're gonna press that. And here's where we can go and we can change some of the functions of the smart battery. This would be the same way that we would go and change those settings in say a smart checker. Now with the S1100 we see that we've got auto storage, we've got charge current at 5.5 amps, charge voltage at 4.20 volts, now that's per cell, storage voltage at 3.80 volts, again that's per cell and we can also look at the battery history as well as a fault log. Now when we go up here, one of the things that you'll notice is our auto storage is set to off. 
Now, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, I don't want to call it a misconception, but one of the things that you have to be aware of when you buy a smart pack. Now, a lot of times when you buy these smart packs, that feature is not turned on. It's a feature that's there, but it's not turned on. And in this particular case, this battery has it turned off, as you can see here. So we actually need to turn that on. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click the button. And what's nice here is, you know, on the S1100, which is different than, you know, the uh, like Smart Checker and some of the previous iterations of these chargers, off is at the beginning of your uh, your time right so on previous ones when you'd go to change it off was all the way at the bottom of the list and it, you know it started or it, you know it, it went from 240 hours to off so you had to go through a long long list to get to these starting numbers on the s1100 uh, when it's set to off you know i start scrolling down and I can change those values where it will start to smart, uh, where the smart battery will start to automatically discharge itself. Now, in this particular case, I want it to be uh, 48 hours. So if I charge the pack, if I have not used it within 48 hours, it will go ahead and start a self discharge. Now, the smart batteries can be adjusted to auto storage anywhere between 12 hours and 240 hours. We're at 48 hours now. I'm going to go ahead and press the button. And now our auto storage is set to kick off at 48 hours after the completion of a charge cycle. Uh, the next thing that we're going to adjust is where it says charge current. It is set at the factory at 5.5 amps. I want to go ahead and lower that to 3.3 amps. And that is a 1.5C charge rating. Now, that's a personal preference for me. You can charge anywhere you want that's within the, the safe charge parameters of the battery. For this particular battery, it can be charged up to 3C, which is 6.6 .6 amps. I personally just don't like doing that. Again, personal preference. Uh, I feel like, um, you know, I will prolong the battery life by... Uh, using a little bit more conservative charge current. Uh, so for this pack, I'm going to use a 3.3 amp charge current, which is about a 1.5 C uh, charge rating. And we'll leave charge voltage and storage voltage alone. And now we can go back. And what we'll see here at the top is that charge current has changed. Now it's still on charge. It's still on, you know, the proper chemistry. In fact, when you've got a smart pack installed, it already knows what the chemistry is, and it grays that option out where you can't change it, which is good. It also knows the number of cells, and we can't change that either. And it knows the charge current. Now, if we change the charge current here, say we change it from 3.3 up to... You know, we want to charge a little bit faster. So we're going to go to a 2C rating. We're going to go to 4.4 amps for this particular charge cycle. Now what happens is it actually puts that into the smart battery settings. So now that's also set to 4.4 amps. And now this will always charge at a 2C rating. So again, you know, I prefer it to be at 3.3. So we'll adjust that back to 3.3. We'll go back, and you'll see that that charge current is back at 3.3 amps now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this main screen, and I'm just going to unplug the battery and plug it back in, and let's see what happens when it starts that auto charge cycle now. So we're going to go ahead and plug the smart battery back in, um, and see how the battery charger or how the S1100 behaves when we plug in a smart battery that's configured the way that we want it to. Now we've got our balance lead plugged in and it's going to head and it's going to initiate the charge cycle. Now, if we watch that charge rate, that charge rate is going to get to right now it's at 3.2 amps, but that's fine. Uh, so when you're using smart batteries, it automatically starts up a smart charge charge cycle 
to get that battery charged for you where you don't have to touch anything. Just plug in your smart battery, it starts that charge cycle, you're ready to go. All right, so now we're back at that initial charger ready screen. And when we plug in our smart battery, uh, what I wanna show you is how we can interrupt that automatic charge sequence in case we don't wanna go ahead and start automatically charging the pack. Say we wanna put the pack at a charge or a storage voltage, or we wanna discharge the pack. Uh, the way that we would do that is we'll go ahead and plug up our balance lead. And when it says initiating smart charging, just press the button and it'll take us to our menu to our charger settings. So pressing that center button will interrupt that automatic charge sequence. We can go here and we can change it from charge to whatever task we want to do, whether we want to go to storage voltage, discharge, charge, whatever the case may be. In our case, we're going to go ahead and uh, continue the charge cycle, and we can just go down here and hit start, and we're going to allow the charge to complete. You're going to want to go ahead and, uh, and let it run here for a few seconds before we step away. And what we'll see is, you know, now that a charge rate of 3.2 amps instead of the initial 5.5 uh, that it was charging at before, where with the 5.5, I think our charge time remaining was about 15 minutes. Uh, so by changing that to 3.2 amps, we've increased the charge time from 15 minutes up to 20 minutes. And it calculates all that, you know, based on the milliamp hours of the battery and the charge rate. All right, so as we can see, we are now done with the charge of the Spectrum Smart 4S 2200 milliamp hour 30C pack. And what we can see is we no longer show any charge rate. We've packed 1,084 milliamp hours of capacity back into the battery and it took a total time of 24 minutes. So not too far off of the estimated 20 minute time. All right, so some final thoughts on the S1100. Overall, I think it's a fantastic charger for someone that's looking for an AC charger uh, that they can use inside their home without having to, you know, be connected to a DC power source. Uh, it is a single channel, so that is a bit of a limitation uh, for some folks that are looking for multiple channel chargers. This is only a single channel charger, so keep that in mind. With the S1100 being a 100 watt charger, uh, it's going to be great for charging your 3S and 4S packs. There is going to be a slight limitation with 6S packs where the peak charge current that it can reach with 6S packs is right around 4.5 amps due to the 100 watt limitation of the charger. So if you're running like a 4500 pack at 1C, you're still going to get the, uh, the same charge rates that you would expect. But as you start getting into bigger 6S packs, say like the... Uh, 6s 5000 6000 7000 packs uh, you're not going to quite reach 1c but you're still going to be able to charge those batteries in a perfectly reasonable amount of time now if you're looking for something that can do uh, you know 2 and 3c charge rates on those bigger 6s packs you may be looking for something more along a dc charger uh, like the smart s1200 and s1500 chargers Overall, I really like the new interface of the S1100 compared to, say, the S2100, the S1200, S1500, uh, where it's more tailored to the smart battery environment. And I like how it automatically ch sets up the smart charge feature as soon as you plug a smart battery in. Uh, that makes the smart ecosystem just a little more convenient where I don't have to fumble around with any switches or anything. I just plug my battery in, it starts charging, and we're all set. My understanding is that that version of the software that the S1100 comes with will be ready soon for the S2100, the S1500, and the S1200 chargers. So if you like those feature sets and you want to have those on your old chargers, be looking for those updates coming soon from Spectrum. Keep in mind that the S1100 is compatible with both smart batteries and traditional batteries. So if you're looking for a new AC charger, the S1100 is definitely one that I can recommend. If you're interested in purchasing an S1100 charger for yourself, be sure to check down in the description for links to the S1100. They are affiliate links with Horizon Hobby, and purchasing through Horizon offers a small commission back to the channel, and we certainly appreciate your support.
Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you're always made aware when new videos come out on the channel. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you in the next one.